Good day everyone. Today's video, we will be discussing the TCP IP and the OSI networking models. Here are the list of topics that we will be tackle, or tackling in this video. Let us first discuss TCP IP or Transmission Control Protocol, Internet Protocol. What is TCP? TCP or Transmission Control Protocol is a protocol for establishing and maintaining a network conversation over which application programs can exchange data. So, what does TCP used for? TCP is a protocol used for arranging data so that it can transmit securely between the server and the client. What is Internet Protocol? Internet Protocol or IP defines how computers send packets of data to each other. A packet is the unit of data that is routed between an origin and a destination on the internet or any other packet switched network. Shown in the illustration, is how packets hops from one router to another to reach each uh, to reach its destination now we already know what tcp and ip means and stands for what now is tcp ip combined tcp ip is a set of rules for communicating between networks, the dynamic web of internet-based communications is governed by the network protocol. Transmission Control Protocol or TCP and Internet Protocol IP are two of the most well-known members of the Internet Protocol suite, which has created or which was created by Stanford University to allow for heterogeneous connectivity. TCP IP is a non proprietary protocol that cannot be operated by a single company. As a result, the IP su uh, suite can be easily updated. It can communicate with any other devices since it is compatible with all or uh, with all with any operating system <clears throat> the ip uh, suite operates with a wide range of computer hardware and networks let us now discuss the tcp ip protocol architecture with a family of protocols the OSI model describes an idealized network communication. TCP IP does not explicitly correlate to this model. TCP IP either blends several OSI layers, which will be discussed later on, into a single layer or skips la uh, those layers entirely. The TCP IP protocol layers are shown in the table and the different protocols available to each stage of the TCP IP protocol stack. The protocol stack is implemented differently to each host involved in a communication transaction. Let us discuss them one by one. The network layer or the network interface. The network layer helps you define details of how data should be sent using the network. This layer specifies how data can be physically transmitted through the network. This layer also in, uh, is, in, in, is in charge of data transmission between two devices connected to the same network. The next layer is the internet layer, also known as the uh, network layer sometimes. 
Okay, it is responsible for accepting and delivering packets across the network. The protocols used in these layers are IP or Internet uh, Protocol, ARP or Address Resolution Protocol, and the ICMP or the Internet Control Message Protocols. The third layer, or sorry, the next layer is the transport layer. <coughs> Now, the transport layer, uh, by ch uh, exchanging data reception, acknowledgement, and retransmitting missing packets, uh, ensures that packets arrive in order and without errors. So, some of the uh, protocols used in the transport layer are the TCP and the UDP, or the User Data Gram Protocol. Next, we have the, the fourth layer. We have the application layer. Sorry, the first, uh, the first layer actually, okay, which is the application layer. Now, the application layer defines standards or standard internet services and network applications that anyone can use. To send and receive data, these services operate with the transport layer. NFS or the Network File System, DNS or the Domain Name System, Telnet, SNMP or the Simple Network Management Protocol are some of the protocols used in this layer. Now, let me just clarify here. So, in the TCP IP model, the network interface is layer 4. The internet layer is layer 3. The transport layer or the transport is uh, layer 2 and application is layer 1. And those are the layers in the TCP IP model. We now go to the use of TCP IP. Generally speaking, TCP IP can be used to provide network based remote login, interactive file transfer email delivery, network-based web page delivery, and remote access to a server host file system. It is an analogy for how data changes shape as it flows across a network. From the uh, concrete physical layer to the abstract application layer, it explains the basic protocols or communication processes at which layer as data passes through. Here are some, or here are the list of uh, the, ad the uh, advantages and disadvantages of TCP IP model. <clears throat> we go first with the advantages. So first we have the uh, advantage under ad advantages of TCP IP helps establish a connection between the uh, different types of computers. Next is works independently on uh, of the OS. Third, supports many routing protocols. Fourth, uses client server architecture that is highly scalable. Another is can be operated independently. Next, we have support several routing protocols. And lastly, is lightweight and doesn't place unnecessary strain on a network or computer, which uh, may lead to data loss or uh, slow uh, transmission of data. We now go to the different disadvantages of TCP IP. First, we have complicated to set up and manage. Second, transport layer doesn't guarantee delivery of packets. Third, isn't easy to replace protocols in TCP IP. Fourth, doesn't clearly separate the concepts of services, interfaces, and protocols, so it isn't suitable for describing new technologies in new networks. And lastly, is especially vulnerable to a synchronization attack 
which is a type of denial of access attack in which a bad actor uses TCP IP. So those are the advantages and disadvantages of TCP IP model. We now go to the OSI networking models. Now, two different versions were compiled in uh, 1983 and released in 1984 to create the OSI model that most people are familiar with today, especially in the uh, IT industry. Uh, this was conceived in uh, 1970 when computer networking was taking off. So what is Open Systems Interconnection or OSI? The uh, Open System Interconnection or OSI model deconstructs the issues that arise when data is transferred from one device to another. These hundreds of issues are divided into seven layers by the Open Systems Interconnection or OSI model. The layers and what they represent are as follows. First, we go to the seventh layer, which is the application layer. Now, the application layer, when a user or uh, when a user, it may be a software or a human, needs to read messages, move data, or do other network-related tasks, the users may communicate with the program or network. Layer six belongs to presentation layer. Now, based on the semantics or syntax okay, that the software embraces, it converts or formats data for the application layer. The fifth layer or the session layer is the session layer. Now, the session layer sets, uh, sets up, coordinates, and terminates conversions between applications. Layer number four is the transport layer. Now, the transport layer provides error checking mechanism and data flow controls when transmitting data through a network. Layer number three is the network layer. Now, the network layer moves data into and through other networks. The second layer is the data link layer. Now, the data link layer uh, problems that arise as a result of bit transmission errors are dealt with. Layer number one is the physical layer. So, the physical layer uses electrical, mechanical, or procedural interfaces to transport data. So, again, that's... Uh, Enumerate the seven layers. First, we have the application layer. Sixth is the presentation layer. Fifth is the session layer. Fourth is the transport layer. Third is the network layer. Second is the data link layer. And lastly, the first layer is the physical layer. So what are the advantages of the OSI model? The advantages of OSI model is it helps in determining the required hardware and software to build their network. Second is it understands and communicates the process followed by components communicating across a network and it performs troubleshooting by identifying which network layer is causing an issue or and focusing efforts on that layer. Let us now compare TCP IP model from OSI model. As you can see in the illustration, there are only four layers in the TCP IP model while there are seven layers in the OSI model. 
some of the uh, layers on the OSI are combined in one layer of the TCP IP model. Now, even though, let me zoom in. So, for example, the TCP IP model has the application uh, uh, layer, uh, while in the OSI, the equivalent of the application layer in the TCP IP in the OSI layer are three layers, which is the application, the presentation, and the session. Now, even though some of the layers in the OSI is combined in one layer in the uh, TCP IP model, the protocols being used in each layer are the same. The next slide are the similarities of TCP IP model and the OSI model. So let's uh, enumerate them one by one. First is, they are both logical models. Next, they define networking standards. Okay, number three, they divide the network communication process in layers. Okay, and next we have they provide frameworks okay, uh, for creating and implementing networking standards and devices. Fifth, they enable one manufacturer to make devices and network components that can coexist and work with the devices and components made by other manufacturers, making it interoperability. And that concludes our topic for today. Thanks for watching.